All right, this is grade six, unit two, lesson 15. And in this lesson, students are gonna be using tape diagrams to understand ratios in context, specifically contexts where students are gonna be comparing rate part to part, but also considering the whole of those two parts. So part, part, whole. Uh, tape diagrams. All right, so let's get started. And we, we begin this lesson uh, with uh, true or false, just the warm up with 15.1, true or false. And uh, we're supposed to just kind of recognize whether each of these statements are true or false, right? And so we could see one fifth of 45 is absolutely the same thing as. For uh, 45 divided by 5, because those are and those are the exact same thing. And then uh, let's see. Then we've got one fifth of 20. Is that the same thing as one fourth of 24? Mm, that's a little trickier. So I might need to actually calculate this stuff out. And and uh, let's see. One fifth of uh, 20. So that's going to equal four. And then one fourth of six of 24, that's going to equal six. So that is definitely false. And then here, this next one, 42 times one sixth is the same thing as one sixth times 42. I don't even have to multiply it out. It's, the answer is four in both cases, but I don't even have to in order to identify whether it's true or false. And then lastly, this one's a tricky one, 486 times one twelfth. Uh, 1 12th. So we know that that is 486 over 12. That's that's that answer. And then, but the question is, is that equal to 480 over 12 plus 6 over 12 or 480 twelfths plus 6 twelfths? And of course, it really is because you can decompose that 486 to be 480 and 6. So adding those together, as fractions, there you go. So that's got to be true. We don't even have to complete the uh, the work to find out what the answer is. We just know that it's true. All right, so cubes of paint. A recipe for maroon paint says uh, we need to mix five milliliters of red with three milliliters of blue and when you mix that amount of red and blue you get maroon and so we're supposed to use snap cubes i already draw the drew the picture right here and i need to copy it because i know i'm going to use it later and it says what amount does each cube represent so in this case each cube represents one ml and that gives us our ratio of five to three and then how many milliliters of maroon paint will there be so the idea is saying what's the total and in this case what that total is is definitely eight so we had a ratio of five to three part to part the part is five compared to the other part which is three and then the whole in this case is eight milliliters all right and we're going to use that and you'll notice i copied it again it's right here it says now suppose each of these cubes represents two milliliters so we've got two 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 how much of each color paint is there so how much red well we had five units of red so five times two is 10. How much blue do we have? We, we have three units of two, so that's six. And then how much maroon do we have? Well, all together, we had eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units. Each unit represents two milliliters, so eight times two is 16. All right, and so then we're just going to kind of reset that and we're going to move on to the next question, which is now suppose each cube represents five milliliters. All right, well, no problem. We're just going to say each one of these represents five. And we're going to go through that same process. So how much red do we have? Well, we have five units of five. 
So that's 25. How much blue do we have? We have three units of five. So that's 15. And then how much maroon do we have? Well, all together, we had eight units. Each of them are five. So eight times five is 40 milliliters. All right, uh, continuing on into question three. Suppose you need 80 milliliters of maroon paint. All right, so now we're still using that same ratio of five to three, all right? Five uh, parts red to three parts blue. Now it says, suppose we need 80 milliliters of maroon. So what does that mean? Well, that means all together, we want this to be 80. All together, we want it to be 80. Now we know we have eight units, well, that means each unit represents 10. And, and so now, how much, how much red are we going to need? Well, that's five units of 10, so that's 50. How about blue? That's three units of 10, so that's 30. And then we can see we have 80 milliliters of maroon. Now, if the original recipe is for one batch, that original five, five to three, if that original five to three counts as one batch, how many batches are in this 80 milliliters of maroon? Well, that's 10 batches. And that's really just the value of each of these units, 10 batches. All right, solve each of these following problems with tape diagrams if we need to, right? And we just got a bunch of word problems right now. So let's just kind of hammer them out. So this one says the ratio of students wearing sneakers to those wearing boots is five to six. So that means we're gonna have six, uh, five units here, three, four, five, and six units here. So they're not perfect, they don't need to be but sneakers to boots. So these are sneakers and these are boots. So the five units is the sneakers and the six units is the boots. It says if there are 33 students in class, how many of them are wearing sneakers? So what that's saying is the ratio of the class is five to six and all together we have 33 students. So that means these 11 units represent the 33 students. So that means inside each unit is three. All right, so we know we have three students in each unit. And now we can answer the question. Uh, let's see, oh, the question is, how many of them are wearing sneakers? So that means we've got five units of three so five times three is 15 students with sneakers. All right, number two, a recipe for chicken marinade it says to mix three parts oil with two parts soy sauce and one, point, uh, one part orange juice. So we've got three things being mixed. We've got oil, soy sauce, and orange juice in the ratio of three, two, and one. So let's do it. So we've got three units, one unit, two units, three units, two units, and then one unit. And these three units is oil. The next was soy sauce. And the last one was, I believe, orange juice. Orange juice. And there's our ratio of three to two to one. And it says you need to make 42 cups of marinade in all. So what does that mean? That means these six units represents 42. And because we have six units representing 42, that tells us that each of these units represents seven. And then the question is how much of each ingredient do you need? So how much oil do we need? We need 21. 
How much soy sauce do we need? We need 14. And how much orange juice do we need? We need seven. And these are parts, 21 parts. Oh, no, since it says cups, we can say 21 cups, 14 cups and seven cups. And then the last word problem right here. Elena makes fruit punch by mixing four parts cranberry juice to three parts apple juice to two parts grape juice. So again, we've got another triple. All right, so let's draw it. So we got one, two, three, four is the cranberry juice. And then three parts apple juice. So one, two, three, three parts apple juice. And lastly, two parts of grape juice. One, two, and that's the grape juice. All right, so then it says if one batch includes 30 cups of apple juice, Oh my goodness, how large is this a batch of fruit punch? Basically, they're saying if, if the orange represents 30, I think it's, a, yeah, 30, I want to know how much is the entire thing. How much is this entire thing if, what does it say? <clears throat> oh, if the apple juice represents 30. So if this apple juice right here represents 30, that means each unit has to be a 10, which means all of the units represent a 10. And we want to know how much do we have all together. Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 units, and each unit equals 10, so 90, 9 times 10 is 90, what is that, 90 cups is how much juice this is going to make. And we can just kind of skip through the, the inventing your own, and look through the, the lesson summary, it's a beautiful lesson summary, and let's, let's dig into some practice right now, all right? So, Here's a tape diagram representing the ratio of red to yellow so that we can make orange. It doesn't look very red, but anyway, uh, red to yellow to make orange. What is the ratio of yellow to red? Ooh, nice. So what is the ratio of yellow to red? So that's yellow to red. So we could either call it two to three because there's two units of yellow and three units of red. Or we could just count the three, uh, like add up the threes, and uh, we would say that's six yellow to nine red. So uh, either one of these ratios would work, all right? Um, so now the question is how many total cups of orange will this mixture make? So at this point, I think I'm gonna lean on that six to nine ratio right here, because they wanna know what's the total. Well, the total is we've got five units times three gives us 15. So um, that's gonna be 15 cups of orange. At the kennel, the ratio of cats to dogs is four cats to five dogs. There's 27 animals in all. So that means we know that this total right here is 27 animals. And then of course there's the tape diagram. What's the value of each of these units? Well, we've got nine units all together and those nine units represent 27. So that means each of those units has to be three because nine times three Nine copies of three gives us 27. And then, so that's three. How many dogs are in the kennel? Well, we can see we've got five units of three. So that's five times three. We've got 15 dogs. And then it says how many cats are in the kennel? We've got four units. Four units times three is 12. And sure enough, when you add those together just as a check, you get 27. So uh, there's our, our answer there. It says, last month, there were four sunny days for every rainy day. 
All right, so our ratio there is four to one, isn't it? So one, two, three, four units to one unit. So four sunny for every one rainy. And it says, if there were 30 days in the month, how many of those days would be rainy? So that means all of these units represents 30 days. And since we have five units, one, two, three, four, five, and those five units have to equal 30, that means each unit represents six. And so if we want to know how many days were rainy, well, we've got just six days. One unit of six is six rainy days right there. Now we're going to kind of cross over the page here, the page divide, and look at these tables to answer the, this question. So Noah entered a 100-mile bike race. Way to go, Noah. And he knows he could ride 32 miles in 160 minutes. At this rate, how long will it take him to finish that 100-mile race? And we're going to use a table. Now it is asking us, use both tables and figure out which one works better. Right, they're both going to work, uh, and so let's let's take a look. Let's take a look at table A. So we start with our 32 miles is 160 minutes, and somehow we have to get down to one. So what are we going to do? Well, we're probably going to divide by 32, and that's how we go from 32 to one. And so we're going to divide by 32, and 160 divided by 32 is five and then somehow we have to go from one to a hundred that's actually kind of easy all we have to do is multiply by a hundred which means we're going to multiply by a hundred over here and we get 500 minutes so this says uh table a says to go that hundred miles it's going to take noah 500 minutes so now let's take a look at b now table b is supposed to give us the exact same answer uh, let's take a look. Uh, so for some reason, they go from 32 up to, oh, I see. I see what they did. Okay, this is a trick. Oh, uh, not trick, uh, tricky, neat. Okay, so they said, okay, to go from 32 to 96, that's triple. So we're going to triple it, which means we're going to take our 160 and triple it, and we get 480. And then we've got four miles. Now, where does that four miles come from? That's 32. I, I see a relationship. We could do like 32 divided by eight gives us four. So that means 160 divided by eight gives us 20. Hello, Jamie. <laughs> and then, so what's 100? Well, 100 is 96 miles plus 4 miles, so that's 100. So 480 uh, hey. plus 20 gives us oy. 500. Oi, 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 yeah. All right. And then we're almost done. All oi. right, so a cashier. Worked an eight-hour day and he earned fifty-eight bucks. Did you know? Eight-hour day, fifty-eight bucks. Mm -hmm. The num double number line down here shows the amount she worked. Uh, she earns for working all these different hours. So if she works these hours, this is how much she gets paid. Uh, how much does the cashier earn per hour, as in one hour? So where does that one hour live? Well, that one hour lives right here which means we want to know how much does she make. Well, that's going to be half of $14.50. So that's actually $7.25. So how much does she earn per hour? $7.25. How much does the cashier work uh, earn if she works three hours? Well, we know that two hours is $14.50. And one more hour, we know one hour is 725. So all we have to do is add those together and get 2175. 2175.
Woo! And the last question, we're, we're hammering this out. A grocery store sells bags of oranges in two different sizes. So we've got three pound bags for four bucks. We've got eight pound bags for nine bucks. Which oranges, uh, which bag costs the less, uh, the least per pound? All right, so uh, we need to compare these two ratios. And so we've got one ratio, which is three pounds LBS for four dollars. Dollars. Then we have an, another uh, bag, LBS in dollars, which is eight pounds for nine bucks. So somehow we need to get either a common pounds or we need to get a common dollars. It doesn't really matter. They'll both give us, uh, be able to make us, uh, allow us to answer the question. So I'm probably going to get common pounds. So let's do, if I times by eight here, that's going to give me 24 pounds and times by eight gives me 32 bucks. So 24 pounds gives me $32. And then similarly, I'll times this by three, that gives me 24 pounds. But I'm going to do the nine times three, that gives me $27. 24 pounds, but for the first bag, it costs $32. For the second bag, it costs $27. So we can obviously see the eight pound bag is the better deal. And that wraps up, let's see, that wraps up whichever one we were doing in sixth grade. Uh, unit two, lesson fifteen. Say goodbye to Jay. Say goodbye, Jay. Goodbye. All right, and that's it. We'll see you.